<laughs> What's up? It's Actors Daily Bread. Welcome to episode 156. I'm Christine Horn, your life and career coach. And this is Actors Daily Bread, where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. This is our once a month Hollywood Bound Actors Open Office Hours. It's our Q&A. So every fourth Monday of every month, I put a little image in the Facebook group and I say it's office hours. Ask me anything. This is your chance to ask me anything. So I, all day, people have been posting questions. So I'm live on Instagram. So you guys are getting a chance to watch Actors Daily Red Live. But right now I have at least 14 already questions that I'm going to honor first before I honor any more questions that come through the thread. So if you are an actor who wants to learn how to book film and television, you're in the right place. If you are new to me, I want to say what's up. If you're watching on Instagram or Facebook, if it's your first time watching me put a one in the comments put a one let me know if it's your first time experiencing me so I want to welcome you to all my replay watchers who will watch this later what's up replay watchers love you guys I love my replay watchers because you took time <laughs> when you don't have to take the time love my live viewers too if it's your second time watching me put two in the comments if you are an OG member if you someone who's seen me three times or more honey just put OG in the comments just so I know where we stand what's up in Zynga because I want to welcome my new people, and my OGs need to welcome my new people too, because they are in the right place. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. Yes, 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 yes. Love that you guys are here, here on Instagram. Happy post Oscar Monday, right? So much inspiration. Melanie Victor on Instagram, OG member in the house. <laughs> Facebook, make sure you comment. Make sure you give me some love too, because um, Instagram, as always, is blowing up the thread. <laughs> so listen, again, this is Actors Daily Bread. If you have never seen this show before, go to my YouTube channel. For those of you on Instagram, just click the link in my bio. You'll see a link. There's over a hundred. This is episode 156, you guys. So I'm really excited. What's up on Dante, um, who's an OG member? So let's dive right in. So once a month, I understand how important it is for me to answer your questions. I have tons of you in our community, some of you who are brand my brand newbians who are super new, and some of you who are more experienced, um, just waiting on that series regular or guest star. So let's dive in, okay? And you will learn something from these questions. And again, I haven't pre-read these questions. They are just here in the Facebook group. Um, so um, Pam, shout out to Pam. She said she's in a show. She's, she's in, she wants to do film and TV, but she's actually doing a theater show right now. And she's asking how can she maximize her theater project and get casting directors, producers, directors to come see her. It's a juicy role. She, um, she also asked, do, do I suggest that she hire her own publicist for the project? Um, Pam, I answered a little bit of this on our Booking Magnet Academy Q&A that just ended, but I will say this for the audience here. Um, Number one, I would definitely create some kind of flyer, some kind of um, something that has your show flyer plus your headshot, you know, Pam H, you know, starring in blank until such and such, you right? And put a note, I would love for you to be my guest. If you are in inviting someone from the industry to come see you, be prepared to get them a comp ticket, like be able to work that out. The reality is they may not come and see it, but it's just a good look. You don't want to is you're not expecting them to pay. Like if you're asking them to come in, you know, that's what we're looking for. Um, in regards to a publicist, you can. You can absolutely hire your publicist if it's in a, your budget, but I would also suggest acting as your own publicist. Have you put out a press release? You, you can Google how to write a press release. Use a website like prlog.com. I'll put that in the link here in the um, knows.org, prlog.org. It's one of the two, prlog.org or prlog.com. PR log Somebody click it, let me know if it goes. But that's, it's dot com. I was right, I was right the first time. Or the second time, it, I think they own both of them. So it's a win-win. But you can act as your own publicist. You know, yes, you can hire someone, but if you just take a few hours to learn how to write a press release, a really basic one, I've gotten tons of press in my local newspapers, blogs, just by me writing a press release and sending it via email or Twitter. Um, and, you know, websites like Broadway World and things like that, they're always looking for content. So that's definitely a way you can get some eyes on your project. So I hope that helps. Um, so yes, I see you all jumping on. Thank you. Thank you. My OG members, Marilee and Stephanie in the house. I see you on Instagram. There's so many of you. I have to stop, you know, on Instagram saying y'all's names because it'd be like, I mess it up big time. So I'm not even going to, but I see you. I see you. 
<laughs> Let me hop into the next question. Again, this is Actors Daily Bread. This is our Hollywood Bound Actors Q&A. And come on and join the Hollywood Bound Actors free Facebook group. It's awesome. Darius King says, what advice do you have for an actor shooting their own reel? Well, the first thing I want to say is, what are you shooting for your own reel? Because, you know, the big issue we fall into when actors try to do their own demo reel is the quality issue. Okay, gnats are not allowed. I don't know what happened. <laughs> the quality issue is a big thing. Look, industry professionals know the difference between a homemade demo reel and something that um, you actually did on TV. Now, many actors, as I'm sure you know, are using great services um, that will create a reel for you or create scenes for you. Um, uh, I don't even want to mess with their names. There's many out there. I know my Atlanta actors. A lot of you guys use a company out there. I know my LA actors, Rock Your Reel. Shout out to Melissa Blue with Rock Your Reel. So there are some valid companies who do amazing work. So yes, no one's being fooled to think it's NBC or ABC. However, the quality of the camera is so good. The actors that they hire is are, are good. The script they give you really highlights and showcases you. So Darius, and for anyone listening, I know it's frustrating when you don't have any, any footage and you keep hearing you need footage in order to get an audition or to do something. What I suggest in the meantime is Constantly do self-tapes, practice things, you can do monologues, but know that that is not really your reel, okay? I wanna be very clear and not lead you, lead you astray. It will not pass as your reel. What it will do is just say, look, I don't have a reel yet, but this is what I can do. I've got potential, you know what I mean? Like that's, we're not trying to pass it off as a reel. So unless you're investing in one of these companies that will sh will create these scenes for you, and again, some of them are amazing. Do your research. I don't want to put the wrong websites here because um, I don't have them in front of me. Y'all know I always got this little bang situation. When you on the camera, like your little bang is just, is going the opposite direction. Blackout problems. I'm gonna keep going. I get distracted. You know the wig distracts me every time. Ain't no sweat yet, but we. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep it pushing. So Darius, I hope that helps you. <laughs> and anyone else who's trying to do something with a reel, no one's going to be fooled into thinking that that video you shot with your cell phone is, is a legit work. However, I do encourage you to keep creating your own work. I mean, you can take some, you can create your own web series, you can do anything, but just know that the industry standard um, has a standard. But use what you have until you need, until you're able to get something else. Awesome. If you're just joining, welcome. This is the Hollywood Bound Actors Q&A for Actors Daily Bread, uh, where I'm getting into it. Okay, the next question is from, ooh, I'm a mess. Uh, Ikat, mm, Ik, girl, Ikate, that's not the name. I'm so sorry. Shama, okay. That's what we're going to go with right now. Please forgive me. Please give me the phonetic spelling. If you're on, please comment. Let me know that you're here because I hate that I'm, you know, uh, messing your name up. Um, hey, Wendy. Hey, David. I see you on Instagram. Okay, our question is kind of long, so bear with me. Might connect for some of you. She says she's a versatile actress. She says she noticed that I personally have two reels, a comedic and a dramatic on my personal website, which I do. My question is about how many reels do I need to get an agent and what types and how many reels do I need after getting an agent? She also says she's a producer and she produces her own short films and commercials. It's a long, it's a long question here. Um, I'm skipping ahead because y'all don't need to hear all this. She currently has two main reels and several others. I have a talent reel with everything from commercial film, fighting, and voiceover work on it. Okay, there's a whole lot of reels here. Let me continue. She says her plan in the end, can you detail what we should create? I am thinking to take some time this year to create the following. A sports reel, a fighting reel, a commercial reel, a theatrical reel, an instrumental reel, girl, a singing reel. <laughs> Is that good or am I doing too much? Okay, I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna stop right now. There's a lot of reels. There's a lot of reels going on. Um, Ms. Shama, because I'm not even gonna try to say that name no more. Please, I wish she was on the line. Let me, can I check? 
I can't tag you in here. No, I'm not going to wire. Here's the thing. Starting out, you need, not need, if you have a dramatic, so what she was referring to, guys, this bang. What is a new wig? So she's still, she's not, she's not trained. She's not trained. Only my, only my ladies know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she's not trained yet. So what she's referring to, I have a comedic reel and I have a demo reel on my resume. That is because I have that many projects and certainly all the work that I've done cannot fit on one reel, nor should it, nor should it. A lot of times we get confused. We've done 15 projects. We want to put 15 projects on our reel. Like that's how much your reel is for. Your reel is really to show casting and industry professionals what you want to do next. Um, and how you want to be cast next. So just because you did a fierce film back in 1987 don't mean it need to be on your reel today in 2019, okay? So if all you have are three things and that's all you have are three things. For me, I started getting, getting more comedy and more dramatic, so I split them up, okay? I'm gonna take a breath to have a sip, but if you're enjoying any of this content, first of all, give me some likes, give me some hearts so that the Facebook and the Instagram algorithms show me some love. I would greatly appreciate that. Also, if you are not a member of the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group, if you're on Instagram, come on, click the link and join us. It's totally free and lots of fun. Lastly, I'm making a huge announcement on Monday. I'm changing up the way entirely that I do coaching. Many of you have inquired about getting one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Some of you have been used to getting audition coaching with me, one-off. That is all changing for the good, but it's changing. And so I'm so excited to announce this. I'm going to open the doors on Monday. Um, people who are in my VIP community are getting advanced notice of this. But if you want to know about it, I have a waitlist link here in my Facebook group. Um, and as long as you're on my mailing list in some way, click the link in my bio on Instagram and just get on my mailing list some kind of way so you can hear about it because it's going to go fast. I only have spots for 20 people to zero. And so I'm just letting you know now. It's changing. It's changing. All right. Praise God. We're going to keep moving. So, Miss Shema, you have a lot of reels. Now, yes, if you're a singer, like shout out to my girl Moya Angela on the line, who is an amazing singer, right? So, yeah, have something where you are blowing the house down, right? But you, it doesn't all need to be on one thing. They should be separate. If you are someone, like, who is super athletic, can do flips and cartwheels and fight choreography, have a separate something for that, too. All I'm saying for you, Ms. Shema, I don't want you to feel like you can't do anything until they're all done. Start with your basic, which is your dramatic reel. Start there. If you have a comedy one, then do that. If you have it, but don't stress, but never, 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 ever, ever should your commercials and industrials be mixed all together. Don't put a commercial with a, with a TV show, with a singing, like don't do that. Cause that'll just show you're green and you don't know what the heck you're doing. Okay. So keep them separate. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, I see your comment. Um, so keep them separate. Now I'm going to keep going in, in Ms. Shema if, um, you want to expound a bit because she wrote a really long uh, question. I hope I kind of touched on this, but she's basically trying to figure out. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm already ready, but I know my agents will need multiple reels anyway, but it takes time. And my concern is that I will hesitate on applying to agencies, wondering what more I could have done. Okay. I see what you're saying. And for anyone else who's listening, um, Here's a word of advice. Don't pause on reaching out to a new team or going for that opportunity because all your reels aren't done. Ms. Shema, it sounds like you are doing hashtag too much, too much.com. Start with the basic. The basic is let's get you on some TV shows. Let's just get your dramatic reel done. Can we agree to start there? So I'm going to tag you to this once this video is done so we can just agree to start there because you may get an agent and they say, we don't need this. Or they only need it when something comes up. You know what I mean? I'm a singer too, but my singing reel is not necessary for every audition. So if that's holding you back, stop letting it hold you back. Okay, I'm going to move on. Thank you, guys. I see the comments. Um, if you're just popping on, this is Actors Daily Bread, episode 156. You can binge me on YouTube and subscribe, please. This next question is for Elaine Lockhart. Um, she's asking about the website Casting About, which is an awesome website to find out who's casting what in Los Angeles and New York. It's really great because you find out about um, 
casting associates, casting assistants, you get mailing addresses, you can print labels. It will also tell you what offices are like, please, no mail, please don't send us anything. Thank you very much. It'll also tell you when it shows on hiatus, super helpful. So she's asking, she said, I used it once, but it didn't list the casting director's address. And she's asking how to navigate that website. Elaine, it just depends. A lot of times, especially in, a, in the LA, New York market, a lot of casting directors will hop offices. There is a gnat in here that is not paying rent. Okay, let's get out my shell. Um, a lot of times in New York and LA, especially, casting directors will move with the production. Even in Atlanta, sometimes like they'll be they'll have an office while that show is in set in, is shooting, and then it shuts down. And so they're just kind of like freelancers like you. Um, and that's really what you know casting directors are. They don't have a secure job. Yes, they're casting directors, but they're going they're freelancing just like you and i say that so that you also remember how much alike that you actually are we're all in this together greetings from azuka hey azuka <laughs> right so that's a little tidbit about casting about awesome da -da -da -da. next question is from teddy pete marlene peters she asked what is the best way to submit to a casting agent that you know is booking without representation Oh, that's a good, good, good question. Um, and these are some of the ninja tactics I teach in my Booking Magnet Academy. Um, but to, get, to answer a piece of your question right now, if you have word that someone is casting something, like sometimes Backstage.com, the online magazine, will put casting notices and they'll have a way for you to reach out to people. That's one way. Another way is to use ActorsAccess.com. You may find that breakdown on there. Another way is uh, CastingNetworks.com. You might find that breakdown on there. But if you happen to have, and I'm not saying this is the way, can we be clear? Don't nobody be like, Christine Horn said, listen, I'm giving you I, something I heard one time that I may or may not have done before. If you have the information for some reason, and if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are the one, then, you know, if they can find the casting director on Twitter or Facebook or something, let them know, like send a, a message saying, hey, I'm, let me give you an example. Because again, there's no hard and fast rule. Sometimes it's work, sometimes it blows up in your face. That's the risk we take. But hey, we're actors, we take risks. Like nothing's guaranteed, so like go for it. As long as you're not disrespecting anybody, go for it. I'll share a story with you because that's the better way to t give you the answer to this question. Back, y'all remember that movie Selma, right? A little movie called Selma, right? So that's a movie that was cut out of, but that's neither here nor there. Shout out to Ava DuVernay, who's amazing. Um, and I remember her sharing the story that uh, actually a, f a friend of mine, his name is Nigel, he sent, when he found out she was uh, direct, gonna be directing Selma, he sent her a Twitter, uh, a tweet. Well, first of all, why did he send her a tweet? Because he did his research and saw that she was very active on Twitter. So that's a big thing. Some of you are trying to reach out to people in ways they don't wanna be reached out to. So it's important you're doing your research. But Ava DuVernay is very active on Twitter. He knew that. And he sent her a picture. And she shared this story on Twitter after and the movie was about to open. She shared that he sent her a tweet. He dressed up like Malcolm X. And he said, I am the one. And then what she said when the movie was about to open, she's like, and indeed he was. Now, had he been too scared and didn't have the courage to put himself out there, he really looks like Malcolm X. And if you saw Selma, that was him. He, from there, was able to get an audition and then, of course, booked it. But he had to let, him, he had to let her know that he existed. You can't be a secret and a success. If you know that you're the one, then let it be known. The problem is, and the reason why casting directors and industry professionals are like, please don't reach out to me, leave us alone, go through your agent, is because some of you are not aware of what it is that you're selling. You're not aware of what your type actually is, and you're just like, have any of y'all seen that, that meme on Facebook? It's just a cat at the computer. Like, da, 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 da. that used to be me back in the day, too, when I wasn't booking. I had zero bookings, didn't know what I was doing wrong. I was like, any, sit me for anything, let me do anything. And when you're doing that on Actors Access or Casting Networks, all it says is you don't know what it is you're selling. You don't know your own project. So if you don't know what well, hell, I don't know either. 
Like it said, it said 40 something Latina and you submitting and you 19 in Chinese. Like be aware, like do your job first and then you can be taken seriously. So Teddy, I hope that helps and I hope that answers your question. Who I've been talking? All right, I need a sip of water, y'all. If you're enjoying this, can I get um, can I get a little something in the comments? Can I get a little hey, Christine? Thank you. This is going good. I like it. I don't know why I went to an Atlanta uh, accent. Got to fix that bang. She got to get trained. Y'all want to see my new wig? So I need an inter. I need an inter. I need an intermission because I've been talking a lot. So just in, just in, just indulge me. So these are uh, black girl hair problems. So here's a tip for my black girls who wear wigs. So you buy a wig and you don't know you love it until you love it. And by then it's probably too late. And then you're trying to find it and you can't find it again. So I done bought this wig. Like, is this the wig for my headshot four years ago? I have been looking on different websites. I don't know the name. I lost the tag. And it's not. I done bought two. I was like, I'm going to buy two because I ain't going to get cut out there again. Like, it's like me buy a pair of shoes. And I'm like, all of a sudden, these are your favorite pair of shoes, but you didn't know at first. And so <laughs> you try to go find those shoes again, and they're discontinued and gone. So my point to everything, any black girl who wears a wig is as soon as you feel like that wig is cute, or as soon as you take a headshot with it, you're like, ooh, it's banging. Go back to where you got it from and get as many as you were able to bet to get. Please. Just a little sidebar. This is stuff people don't tell you. I'm telling you. You be caught out there and you try to wear that one wig too long. It starts getting ratty. It's not a good look. So this is not it. I'm wearing it for y'all tonight, but it's close, but not. <laughs> this is real conversation. Let's get to the stuff that really matters, okay? <laughs> um, and shout out to my white sisters too. I was working with a young lady on set recently and she was like, I want a wig. I said, white girls have wigs too. They got tracks too. Like, don't be fools. So you just gotta go to a white wig shop. Don't go to the black wig store. Go to the black, go to the white one. In LA, there's plenty of them. And that's not racist, that's just real. That's just go to where you can find for your texture of hair. And honey, men be wearing wigs too. Well, uh, uh, what you call it? Glue on goatees, man. If you ain't working, get you a goatee. See how, see how it changes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Love Nation, Tracy created my. Hey, Kizzy, how are you? Okay, let me drink some water. I'll get back to it. So, if you're just joining, I'm not just chilling. I'm actually. Going deep, this is Actors Daily Bread, episode 156. I'm answering all the questions that were in the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group thread. Once a month, fourth Monday of the month, we do an open office hours. So this is me just doing it so that people who ask the question can see their question get answered. All right, moving on. Hey, Trafina. Hey, Jocelyn. And Zynga says this is so helpful. Oh, I'm so glad you are enjoying it. Welcome. I know this is your... This is your first time in Zynga? Pleasure. All right, Naza Usher. What's up, Naza? She's one of my clients. She says, is March too early to start reaching out to agents and managers after pilot season, or is it better to wait until April? Naza. Next question. That shade is intentional. She knows why. Next question is for <laughs> Gwen. Naz is a private client of mine, and we've had many discussions. So I'm giving her shade with love. Um, Gwen Johnson says, uh, <laughs> Gwen Johnson says, say you prefer film and TV, but start doing theater to keep sharp until you book your first role. Is there something you can do or not do while performing on stage to make sure your transition back to film and TV is smooth so that you're not so large. I'm trying to find a happy medium. Gwen, that's an awesome question. As, as you know, and for those of you who are new to me, my background is in theater. That's where I started. <laughs> Stephanie says, Naza, no better. <laughs> you know. That's where I started. I did Lion King for five years. I did Broadway Vegas and 
that was a huge challenge for me, making that transition from theater to film. It really, really was. I, and it was frustrating. If you can relate, put I can relate in the comments because I knew I was talented. Hell, I'm like, hello, I've been on Broadway. What the hell? I work, why aren't you calling me in? But when I would watch my self tapes back and the feedback that I would get from casting or my agent was that I was too big and I really had to do the work. I had to get a coach. I had to read books. I had to study actors. I had to study television so that I could mimic what they actually really wanted. And I had to really learn not to show every emotion. So Gwen, to answer your question, I think doing theater is always a great thing. A lot of actors in LA do it too. Hey, I'm Dante. A lot of actors in LA will do it too. Just not only to stay sharp and to feel that energy of a live audience and to get reviews and praise, but um, just to keep the creative juices flowing. I think the way to find the balance so that you don't lose momentum is to stay in either a class, if you've taken a class on the weekend, or keep self-taping. I think the key is getting, a, is getting a coach or getting in class. And listen, guys, when I say get a coach, I'm not just talking about hire me. Look, that's not what it is. I'm not even, even doing that anymore like that. But I am saying nothing replaces being in class or working with other actors and staying sharp. If you don't work, you have to work in the medium you want to work in. Period. It's not a magic pill. You can just turn it on, turn it off. If I'm doing theater and performing to a, a 1500 seat house, that is what my muscle memory is. It just is. And it's hard to turn it off when, when it's not already ingrained in you. So when you're new, it's not going to be ingrained in you. So it's just natural. You're going to just be extra. And it doesn't mean you're a bad actor. It just means you're not acting for the correct medium. So my advice is to keep something, stay in something beyond you. I would say get in a class, get in an acting for a camera class and making sure you're self-taping. On Instagram, I have a post in my feed that says, have you self-taped lately? Because you need to just be working that muscle. It is a muscle. Self-tapes are a muscle. Some of you are not booking because your self-tapes suck or you do not know how to manipulate this thing. And until you're able to manipulate it, you're not going to be able to have a relationship with it. This is such an intimate relationship, this camera. So until you really get that, you're not going to see the results that you want to get. Hey, Benzel, what's up? Right? You're not going to see the results you want to get, period. All right, moving on to the next question. Thank you. If you're just hopping on, this is our open office hours Q&A. And we are going through the, who oh, Jesus? I got about, let's see, six more. And then if anyone online wants to take some, ask me, I will. This next one is Kizzy. What's up, Kizzy? Are you still online? Are you still on, are you still on Instagram? Kizzy asks, what are some key things we can take from your courses and apply to the voice, the voiceover world? Hmm. Well, to be totally honest, my zone of genius is not voiceovers, and I'm always very transparent about that. Um, however, I think if there's anything you can take, because I know you have purchased and you've invested in something with me, is character development. Because even as a voiceover artist, it's even more challenging than, be, than doing film and TV because you cannot rely on us seeing you at all. You know, for theater, I'm like, don't show me with your body. Right. And then for TV and film, I'm like, OK, I should be able to look in your eyes and see what you're feeling and see what you're expressing. But when it's voiceover, you don't have any of that. And it's solely about your voice. So all that emotion, all that character building, all that history, all that backstory has to be there and come through this this voice. So if anything, again, that is not my zone of genius. I haven't launched into that. So I won't even pretend um, to to act like it is. But what I do know is I've done a few voiceover gigs in the past and it's been that. It's being able to hear you smile. For those of you who have day jobs or whoever had to answer the phone and they're like, you're the director of first impressions, right? When someone answers the phone, we should hear a smile in your voice. It's the difference between like, you know, thank you for calling Smith and Johnson versus thank you for calling Smith and Johnson. Just because you're you have changed. Everything about you has changed. Your energy has changed, and so the delivery is different. I hope that makes sense. And I, I know I can't dive too deep in it because, because again, that's not my my zone of genius. But that will be the tip that I can give you. Shout out to Say Saycon Sengla, who's here on Facebook. If you are have Fox, tune into the Passage tonight. 
it might be on already because I, I know I'm on, I'm on East Coast. But Seikon's in, on my thread here, and she says, yes, getting, on cam getting an on-camera coach so you can see your face on the camera. Yes, absolutely. So tune into the passage tonight. Seikon's playing the mom to the little, the little girl who's the star of the show. Shout out to her, New York in the house. Um, and Seikon's a great example. She's one of my dearest friends. <laughs> but she's also a great example of someone who is balancing Broadway. She's a Tony nominee. And but also works all the time in film and television. Uh, Kizzy said that does help. Wonderful. All right, I'm gonna keep pushing through. This next one is Zipporah. What's up, Zipporah? Who's also a part of my Booking Magnet Academy monthly membership. If you're interested in that, want some other coaching? Link in the bio. I think you're getting the hand of the handle of this. Um, she says, any tips on staying motivated or encouraged when you feel disconnected from the industry? Haven't worked in a while. I submit daily had to take a break from classes. I practice scripts at home, trying to think of work I can do on my own, but it still feels like I'm not actually doing anything and not feeling very inspired at the moment. I hope this makes sense. Can anyone relate? If you can relate, I know you're not alone. Put I can relate in the comments, please. Give me some, let her know you're, that she's not alone. I can relate, I can relate, I can relate, I can relate, I can relate. <laughs> Let me tell you this. <clears throat> isolation is a dream killer. Honey, isolation. You know what happens in isolation, Zipporah? And anyone listening who feels, you know, Wendy's out there in the Cayman Islands. She's like, I can relate. Kizzy says, I can relate. When we're in isolation, what happens is the other voice starts to take the driver's seat. You know, for those of you who haven't heard, I'm working on my next book. I'm so excited. This ain't the book. I mean, this isn't a binder. But I've been working on it every day. It's almost done, you guys. I can't wait for you to read it. But I talk a lot about our mindset and that voice. So Zipporah, I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about that inner voice and that inner critic. When you're in isolation, she that voice will get louder for you. That voice will tell you, girl, what you doing? You live too far away. Ain't no opportunities for you. What you doing? Like, just give it up. Like, just, you know, just, just stop. Right. And so I know it's challenging, but you have to also ask yourself, what is your why? Stephanie's here on Facebook giving you a lot of hearts. And I know she can relate because she freaking lives in South Boston and has been busting her butt. Y'all just saw Stephanie, one of my OG clients who was just on Boomerang on BT last week. So proud of you. But she knows about that. And you have to hold on to your why, Zipporah. Why are you doing this? What are the goals that you have? Now, I will, I'm going to call you out on this live only because I know we've talked one-on-one. -on -one. When you're in a, if you're in an environment or in a, or in a, or in a pocket of space in a, in a, an area that doesn't have a lot of work, like you can only do what you can do, right? You can only submit to so many things. There's just not a lot of things. If you live in a small area of Texas or Chicago or wherever, right? I get that, or the Cayman Islands. So then the question becomes, what can you do? So yes, practicing scripts, things like that, but you and I have talked about the possibility of you creating your own work. And I haven't had an update about that yet. So when there's no work, stop waiting to get discovered. I always say this, stop waiting to get discovered. Prepare yourself to be seen. How can we see you? How can we see you? How can we know that you exist? There are so many examples of people who have created their own way. Like I'm, for, I'm making myself finish this book before I work on my scripts because I can be like, oh, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So I know my personality. So I know I got to finish this for these next few weeks and then I get to do something else. But you and I have talked about a, a pathway, something that we can do for you, creating your own way. Let us see the Zipporah show. We talked about some ideas. So that is it. There is power. Let me tell you, for anyone who's ever created their own work, I don't care if it's writing a, a, a poem, writing a song, writing a script, doing a monologue and putting it on YouTube, there is power in you taking control of it to be like, uh-uh, I'm in a meeting. <laughs> 
No, I'm having a production meeting right now, calling two friends. Can can I cast you in this? Can you play my friend? Can you play my cousin in this? And we film it. And all of a sudden, you're uh, arranging schedules. You're putting out casting notices. Shout out to my client, Sheena Faust, who's creating her web series now, who lives in a small area of South Carolina. And she's like, okay, I'm in South Carolina. That's what it is. Something happens, work begets work, and energy starts to flow through the air like, oh my gosh, like, and all of a sudden you will find the phone will ring. All of a sudden you'll get that email for an audition. You'll be like, oh my God, it's such a coincidence. I've been so busy with my own project, I wasn't even thinking about it. It's not a coincidence. You are putting that energy out. You are energetic. You are energy. Be very aware of the energy that you're putting out. What is it that you would like to happen for you? And start creating something that you can do for yourself. And it doesn't matter if you have a bunch of followers yet. Lord knows, when I did my first Actors Daily Bread video, I think I had two people watching. One of them was my mama. And now we have grown to this huge community, almost a thousand people. We have the Booking Magnet Academy. But had I not shown up knowing that I had something to say, I had purpose, I had a voice that needed to be heard, we would not be here right now. So I want you to... I want you to, I'm trying to be nice, but I'm not going to be nice. Stop with the pity party. Put some work in. You have talent. You have a drive. You have ideas there. Don't worry about who's going to like it. Just do something. And I promise you, it'll just fuel you for now. Because the fact of the matter is you live where you live for now. It, we've talked about some things, and that just, is what it is. So what can we do to keep that motivation? You have goals, you have desires to move and to save money. So that means going to work with purpose, not be like, oh, I gotta go to dang on work. Oh, I gotta go to work. No, nah, man, I'm going to work today because when I get this check next Tuesday, that's more money going into my moving fund. Like it's, that, it's like a business loan I never have to pay back. I'm going to work with joy and with gratitude. And at, on my lunch break, I'm gonna work on my script. I'm going to write this monologue. I'm going to do this scene, something. Shift that. And do not let that other voice, who is not you, take the driver's seat. Because she will. I talk about this all the time. That voice will get loud. And, every, and even with what I'm telling you tonight, the voice is going to be like, Christian, mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put yourself out there like that. You're not going to be good. No. Ignore that. Expect the voice to come up and then ignore it. Tell her to have several seats. Okay? This is all sent with love, but I know, but isolation is a dream killer. Surround yourself. Look up meetup groups you can find in your in your neighborhood. There are, I bet there are other actors. I know some of my actors in my Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group created their own uh, acting circle. They, they just started doing meetups at their house. They would change houses. Shout out to Joni and the rest of you. You know who you are. And they were like, look, well, we're going to just have a group. We're going to meet um, once a week. But you got to, you be the catalyst for it. You're in Chicago. I have a ton of Chicago actors in my Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group. I dare you to put a post out there tomorrow and that says, hey, looking for actors to network with or meet up with. There are some actors in our, in our Facebook group in Hollywood Bound Actors who are doing some things. I'm not going to say their names, so I want to put them on blast, but they are doing some things. Introduce yourself, network. Okay, moving on. Get off my soap, off my soapbox. <laughs> Thank you guys for rock with me. I know we've been going a minute, but you know we do this once a month, and I want to get to your questions. So, again, if you're just watching, if you're just joining, I'm Christine Horn. I'm a professional actress, and I'm a life and career coach for actors. And this is our Hollywood Bound Actors Q and A. And this is Actors Daily Bread. You can catch up on 155 more episodes of shows just like this on my YouTube channel. So click the link around bio. If you're on Facebook, it's on my page. Just come find me. And um, look at that. Somebody already connected you. I got two more Chicago people right there saying what's up. See what happens? Whew. One, two, three. I got four more questions. Four more questions. All right. What's up, our media? This is Marilee. Shout out to Marilee, who's one of my OG members in my Booking Magnet Academy. Um, she asks, now that, I'm on a, now that I'm in a bigger market, aka Atlanta, aside from sending out love notes and doing background work, what else can I do to continue hitting the ground running? I'm also attending a workshop with Raven Drummer this Sunday. Awesome. Um, Marilee, I think you've been so armed with everything that you 
can do. And I, if I correct me if I'm wrong, you do have rep. Um, Gwen, I answered your question earlier on this um, live, FYI, so you'll have to catch the replay, but I did answer your question. Um, Marilee, I think keeping up your marketing, your monthly marketing we've been working on, excuse me, um, I would also say look into some of the different networking events. You know, for any of you who are in a new market or just your, your current market, look into the Georgia Production Partnership. They do uh, different events. Um, look on the Georgia Film website. I don't know the link to that. Just Google Georgia Film website. A lot of times they'll have things on there. Um, there's mandy.com, M-A-N-D-Y.com. Sometimes there's some things on there. Um, and also meetups. You guys utilize meetup.com. I'm actually going to start doing some meetups um, whenever I'm traveling so that I can meet more of you amazing Hollywood bound actors. But meetup.com, before I um, um, moved away from Atlanta, I actually had my own meetup group that I created. And I know for a fact there are some acting ones in Atlanta. Um, so that's another thing, too. I think. You're doing the the groundwork of getting yourself out there. You have rep, casting directors are getting to know you, you're doing your marketing. So now I think it's just building community for yourself, building community and just being very visible, very visible. You know what I mean? Um, because now that you're new to the, to the area, just proof that you're in Atlanta for real. You know, that's something I've shared with some of you. When I moved to LA, when I moved back to LA two years ago, there was a chunk of time where I had to basically prove I was really in LA because a chunk of my credits were from Atlanta. And a lot of actors, they do it. They have like, Oh, they're just trying to get work in LA or they're just trying to get work in Atlanta. And so they act like they're there, but they're not really there. So it's just kind of proving that you're there and just being seen in and around time, town, taking pictures, posting them, like really making it this huge thing that you're now in Atlanta, like taking Atlanta by storm. Um, if there was anything I could uh, give you with the, that love note you made where you moved, I think that could have been bigger. I hope that helps. All right, moving on to Corey Jacobs, AKA Marky. He says, Christine, how soon have you received word of a booking for television for a television show and how late? For instance, two days, two weeks, et cetera. That's an awesome question, Marky and um, slash Corey, whatever you want to be called. Um, television overall moves very quickly. Television moves network television moves very quickly. So if I audition for something on network TV on a Monday, honestly, if I don't hear back by, if I don't hear back by Wednesday, I just assume I didn't book it. Streaming services are different. Netflix, like you guys, a lot of you guys know me from The Haunting of Hill House. Um, I auditioned for that and I didn't hear nothing for like a month later. And the reason being is streaming services because they're shooting the whole season so they're shooting all 10 episodes, like, you know, back to back. They may be like, oh, we want Christine as the wife, but they're still in search of the husband. And then they got to find the kid. And that just takes time. And they have to, they're really like strategically putting their entire cast in place before they make their final decision. So streaming services will take longer, but network television is so last minute. I mean, every now and then, every now and then something maybe four days and that's but you'll know also corey when you get an audition for a television show you, your agent should send you some information about the, what network it's on who the casting directors are and what the window is for shooting so if the window says they start shooting march 1st and boo it's march 28th honey you didn't get it you didn't get it you didn't get it you didn't get it, you didn't get it. unless it's a last minute replacement. And sometimes things have like have happened. I just shot a show for Disney and I auditioned the day before at my producer session was the day, the night be evening before. And they, at the callback, they were like, just so you know, this works tomorrow. So sometimes TV is so last minute too. things get characters get written in last minute. They get written out. Um, things happen. Um, so hope that answers your question. Moving on, I got two more. All right, Valor Living La Dios asks, 
Christine, what's the difference between reoccurring guest star and featured in television? Um, thank you for your question. Great question. And this is, I'm being nitpicky, but this is just like, when I hear people say stage plays, just say theater. And it's not reoccurring, it's just recurring. R-E-curring, recurring. Um, so recurring means that you're in more than one episode. So you can be a recurring guest star, you can be a recurring co-star. Um, I've done plenty of those. Um, being a guest star means, um, um, how can I describe it? You're, it's, a, it's a bigger part than a, co, than a co-star. There are, there are some large co-star roles, but a guest star has a, you know, more, more scenes in the, um, more scenes in the episode. Um, and then featured, people will use featured when you're really brand new. My brand new beings know. Basically, if you put featured on your resume, you basically we know you were an extra. It's a nice way to say extra or background actor. Um, but certainly, Valor, just Google your question too, and you will get a much more thorough response. Um, um, explanation. My last question is from Trafina, and then I'm going to uh, see if any of you online have a pressing question, and then I'm going to wrap. Because my voice is tired. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. For those of you who popped on late, I am making a humongous announcement on Monday. Um, I've totally changed the way that I offer coaching. Many of you have inquired. I get your DMs. I get your emails. I get your, your tweets. And uh, some huge, exciting changes are coming for 20 um, lucky people. So if you're not connected with me, if you're on Facebook, I have a link to just to get on my wait list. Um, if you're on Instagram, just click something in my, click the link in my bio and just click anything to get on my mailing list so that you don't miss the announcement. I know many of you have inquired and uh, due to my shooting schedule and work schedule, um, I'm making some good changes. I'm so excited about, but I'm, I'm kind of just planting the seed for you because um, I only have room for 20 people and space will go fast. Trafina, hey Trafina, her question is, let me open that. I've been getting, I've been working to make this theater to TV transition for a while. Uh, Trafina is on Broadway, by the way. Hell. Um, I get nothing but great feedback on my self tapes from my agents. Your self tapes are bomb. Um, <laughs> um, and we've done that work, I know. I specifically told my agents to fall back on submitting me for musicals and that I want to focus on on screen work. But I kind of feel like they're not getting it. Most of my auditions in the past few months have come from my self submissions and not from my agents. I'm at a loss. Um, I think your message got cut off, Trafina. All I, it ends with they say they. So, I'll look for the rest of your message and address what you've said so far. Uh, perhaps it just cuts you off for some reason. Here's something to remember. <clears throat> she said, I love that. <laughs> she said, she loved that I sang, my voice is tired. <laughs> I'm like, cause that feels more soothing than talking. Just singing actually feels a bit more soothing. Um, so, Trafina, I cut you off, so I don't know what you were trying to say at the end, but let me say this to you and anyone else listening. As a reminder, your agents, if you uh, are represented, they are, as, and I don't say this to be funny, they're not a nonprofit organization, right? They're, they want to make profit. And even though you have said, please, I don't want to do musicals no more, if they don't feel like they're getting enough bites for you for uh, television at this time, they're just trying to do something to get some money rolling in. And they may be like, well, I know you said, but this is, a, you know, we got this new, you know, ensemble role, or this show is going to Broadway. Are you sure that we can't get this weekly check? <laughs> I've been there. And it really comes down to just being like, time out. And then the other side of that, Trafina, it, it could come down to, I need new rep. And come in the door, like, I'm here to do this. And it's challenging when you're a New York actor because, and a New York actor with theater credits and some great theater credits, by the way, they're just trying to make, they're trying to make money. Yes, they care about you. And yes, they hear what you're saying. But they're like, we haven't been getting enough 
we haven't, you haven't gotten enough bookings in television and film yet for that to be a reality. So it's like, they're trying to do something. And especially if it really fits you, they're like, oh, we could get this paper while you still trying to do this transition thing. So it's a delicate balance. Um, it really is a delicate balance. You can just keep declining. Um, yeah, she was like, that. she was asking, it may be time for a new agent. It's like, sometimes we need fresh eyes on us, you guys. Even if your team has been great, if you are not in alignment, if you've had a meeting, if you've had discussions, and then they're still not hearing you, this is your career. It's show business. You know what I mean? Like, they're looking out for them. And I don't mean any disrespect to any agents or managers. Like, it's they're just, they got to pay their rent. They got to pay their lease. And they're like, we got this talented actress or actor who could book this new, they could book this Book of Mormon ensemble track and we can get this paper. And you're like, I'm an artist and I want to do this and this is what I need to do. So it comes to a point where you have to say thanks, but no thanks. And if we can't agree on this, I totally respect that. And then start looking for an agent and coming in the door with the new agent seeking solely theatrical representation. And in the film and TV where we say theatrical, theatrical doesn't mean theater, it means film and TV, whereas equity means uh, doing theater and shows, to be clear for my brand newbians out there. So Trafina, that's kind of where I think it, it may be falling with you. Just if you haven't had any bookings, significant bookings for film and TV, they're going with what they feel is safe. And then at that point, you kind of have to make a decision. Um, don't be hasty in the decision, certainly, um, because if you don't have a, a whole lot of bookings for TV and film, it may be a challenge at first getting new rep for that. You know, so the benefit is you have an agent that has been repping you for a while on the theater side that knows you and can at least open the door. But also what I find, too, not all agents, but some, you know, we, some of the smaller agencies submit for everything. Some of the bigger agencies have different departments. So you don't have to answer this question on the live, but if your agency has different departments, how are they crossing over? But if you're with like a one man, what I call a one man band, who's like maybe one person, you know, I know my New York agent is um, virtually, essentially one guy, but, and so he submits for everything. He has relationships in different areas. So, but he and I had a discussion um, when I got with him that I wasn't trying to do theater. And I'd already, built a nice array of uh, film TV credits too. So he was okay to take me on in that regard. I hope that answers your question. Whew, I feel like I'm on a talking marathon. Uh, media says, pilot season is kind of slow. Haven't booked any of the Chicago shows yet. Any advice? <sighs> Keep, you're doing all the right things. It's just a matter of time. I'm doing all the right things. It's just a matter of time. You, you know, it's just, you got to just keep doing what you're doing. Consistency. When is your time? It's your time. Keep plugging away. I know we've been working together in our Booking Magnet Academy. Keep doing your marketing. Keep letting people know that you exist. When it's your time, it is your time. I'm doing all the right things. It's just a matter of time. I'm doing all the right things. It's just a matter of time. We have, we sang this song for Stephanie. You know it, and then you book that boomerang. Bam! So just trust that. Um, and just like I gave the advice to Zipporah earlier, keep doing what you can do to bring attention to you. A lot of us need to stop waiting. Stop waiting. Waiting to get discovered in some way. We are in an age where people scour YouTube and scour Instagram to find talent. That's people's jobs. What can you do for you? What can you do for you? Put that on a sticky note. What can I do for me? Those of you looking for representation, what kind of agent or manager do you want? What would an ideal agent or manager do for you? Write that down. And then what can you do for yourself that's on that list? Besides wait, because waiting sucks and it's not a plan. It's not a plan. My pleasure, Trafina. Listen, what's up, Nagi? He says, create content. Yes. You don't matter, it don't matter if 10 people see it. Y'all, I am so big on energy. 
And you have to be very aware of the energy that you're putting out into the world and into your career. It's that thing of why should I help you if you ain't helping yourself? Because that's why when you're down to the wire for a role between someone else, they're asking about your followers and how many you Instagram followers you got. And what's this? Because they like what you bring to the table, boo. That's what they want to know. What you bring to the table? How are you going to help us promote this show? Speaking of shows, tune in to Miracle Workers tomorrow on TBS and you will see me on TBS. <laughs> Miracle Workers. TBS, very funny. They didn't pay me to do that, but uh, I'm doing it anyway. So please support me. Um, um, but it's, <laughs> I'm getting loopy, guys. I've been talking for several hours. Right before I came on here, we had our Q&A for our Booking Magnet Academy. <laughs> Shout out to all, all of you members who I adore. Um, but this has been Actors Daily Bread. I'm going to wrap up. I think I'm going to make me a cup of herbal tea. Thank you all for being here. Again, on the fourth Monday of every month, I do this. So there's always a thing in, the, in our Facebook group that says office hours, a big picture. Just put it there. I'm not a fan of typing all day. So this is just the easiest way to do it. And plus you have to replay and I can connect with you. Um, again, um, stay encouraged, you know. That's all I, you know, I'm not going to cry today. I don't feel like crying, but you know, you know, it could easily happen at any moment. But, you know, what I love about watching award shows and the Oscars and the Emmys and things like that is it just reminds you that um, it's possible. Well, but it's also important to remember is when I watch those award shows, many times I don't see some of my favorite actors there. There are some actors who I adore, whose careers I've been studying for years since I was a kid, and I've never seen them on one of those award show stages. And so what that reminds me of as well is my goal is to do good work. My goal is to, is to be prepared. My goal is to, is to fill the fire and the burning that is in me. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Yes, we can aspire to be in fancy gowns and red carpets, but why are you really doing this? Why are you putting yourself up for rejection day after day? Why are you putting yourself into a position where you have to constantly invest in yourself and take pictures and classes and people tell you you need to lose weight, you need to gain weight, you need to grow your hair, your hair's too nappy, your hair's too straight, your skin too dark. Like, why do you put yourself through this? If you can hold on to that and it's still strong enough for you to wake up and desire to do this again, then you are in the right place. If you wake up and this is a drag on your life and it makes you feel sad and it makes you feel like we all want to quit sometimes like let's be clear some days you're just having a frustrating day some days you don't book the gig that you wanted to book that you thought was yours got but let's that's different from just taking a time out that's when i just take a nap i go do something outside i go to church i take yoga i take a trip sometimes we need a reset that's different we all have moments like that. But if it is not fueling you, if you're not willing to do it for free, then it's time to go. You guys, I submitted today on a short film for no money. I was just like, I like that role. And I was thinking, this, probably, this person's probably thinking like, why is this lady submitted for my student film? But I just wanna work. I like to create. That's why I do this. So if you need to take a break, take a break. This career ain't going nowhere. Honey, Cicely Tyson was on uh, the red carpet, 94 years old, honey. It ain't going nowhere. That's why I love my clients, fit, my 50 and over club and my Hollywood Bound Actors group. But there's room for you. There's room for you right where you are right now. But just remember why you're here. And if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Do what feels good. Instagram, I got to go. It's telling me I got six minutes, five seconds remaining. So good night. I'm Christine Horn. This is Actors Daily Bread. See you next time. <laughs> Facebook, you guys had a few more seconds. Thank you for the love. Bye.